Is this band Yes, or merely a Steve Howe-fronted tribute band? Let's discuss, shall we? Welcome, classic rock fans, to a video where we discuss whether or not the current incarnation of Yes have any real claim to that name. I will be weighing up both sides of the argument for and against, with a nice summing up at the end, so do stick around for that. The topic of to be yes or not to be yes for many is a pretty pretty hot prog potato to be juggling with, to be honest with you. John Davison speaks of the constant evolution of this band and sees it as analogous with a kind of an art collection or a different room in an art gallery, but still very much part of the same exhibition, where what is on display for everybody is merely a modern morphing of the yes identity. I guess metaphorically, imagine if the institution of yes as a concept is like this giant and grand museum of beautiful art, uh -huh. and we're just adding on new halls of exciting opportunities wherein we can exhibit our current art, but all respectfully within the great museum of, of yes. <laughs> I think it's true to say that the music that's written and produced with this band has certainly done so in the spirit of yes, and despite being produced by some remarkable musicians. For many, it lacks the, the dangers of experimentation and flair that the forebearers of this band possessed. I guess what we're talking about here is the very soul of this band. Something that exists, uh, something that's intangible perhaps, and exists beyond the, the brand and endorsements. And yes, fans have been snagging their cardies and spilling their lentil broth over this for a while, getting into a right old fluster. But to be honest with you, I'm rather sat on the fence with this one. Um, I admit that it's uh, a bit of a thorny issue to grapple with. There is one argument, of course, and there'll be plenty of comments in the boxes below that uh, if you like this incarnation of yes, listen to it. If you don't, don't listen to it. Where's the problem? And they've got a fair point, really. Although that in itself would not make for a, a long or interesting video discussion, would it? So that being said, let's look at the two sides of the argument here. This band have always been a bit of a revolving door in terms of its lineup, like one big prog carousel, with principal members getting on and off as it pleases. The drama of this band is part of its appeal, I think. Uh, a drama which Chris Welsh uh, identified in his book on the band. In fact, Jeff Downs also weighed in on this, suggesting that uh, the band is not so much analogous with an art display, but a football team. And that fans of this band's music should just get behind this new lineup. Now, I, th I think the, the whole thing about Yes is that there are so many different chapters of the band. And, um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, if, if, if the real fans want to get behind it, then they, they should accept, you know, the way that, you know, if you follow a football team, you, you don't expect to see Bobby Charlton turning up for Manchester United, you know. But John Davison, all due respect, gets an awful lot of flack for just daring to step into John Anderson's loafers. And this band did not help themselves with the first couple of albums they put out, which were seen as a bit beige, to say the least. However, at least with this new album, it does feel more yes-ish, even though it, it is minus the keyboard pyrotechnics of yore. And it's true that there are no founding members in this band, but Steve Howe is very much part of that classic 70s lineup and is integral to that band's sound, as was Alan White from Topographic onwards before we unfortunately lost him quite recently. But Steve Howe's joining was absolutely seismic as far as I'm concerned, and the Yes album, which kick-starts the 70s incarnation of this band and their sound, I mean, let's be honest that that record kind of eclipses the two albums that came out prior to this one. And Steve Howe is playing better than ever. He's a remarkable musician. And I, for one, enjoy hearing him play within the context of Yes. And also it's worth remembering that Billy Sherwood was very much endorsed by Squire. And John Davison did sing with Squire in the band. My personal preference for Yes going forward after the passing of Chris Squire would have been to keep Benoit David as a vocalist and to stick with Oliver Wakeman on keyboards. However, it has to be said that Mirror to the Sky, the last album, is punchier and more ambitious and was a welcome shot across the bowels for all the naysayers out there. Many have argued that the band sound dreadful live, which I don't buy into. I've seen this band live and thoroughly enjoyed it. 
There's lots of footage on YouTube with people pointing to the fact that it just doesn't sound so great. Like the microphone on an iPhone can faithfully produce the symphonic grandeur of this band. It was once said that yes is Chris Squire and whoever else turns up. And therein lies the problem. Of course with many fans this band ceased to be once we lost Chris Squire. We talked about the soul of this band. This soul had uh, any kind of physical incarnation, it would be Chris Squire. And we could argue this band should have folded then, really, despite Chris Squire's wishes that it carried on. And there is the argument I'm rather sympathetic towards, and that is that Steve Howe should have continued playing this wonderful, wonderful music, kind of in the same way that Steve Hackett uh, honours the Genesis legacy. And uh, to be honest with you, John Davison writes well. But his lyrics are at times a little bit too West Coast for me sometimes and doesn't employ the same level of gobbledygookery as that original chap with his harp and prog squeakings. But I think what did the most damage for this band is, as I've said before, when they really needed to put out a strong, strong album, something they could stake the legitimacy of this lineup upon, they put out Heaven and Earth, which is definitely seen as a bit of a dud prompting the Yes Faithful and the Beard Strokers out there to wonder what in heaven's name were they thinking. And despite Mirror to the Sky receiving some great reviews, including my review by the way, many Yes fans feel it still doesn't come close to that classic Yes sound. In fact, um, Buzz Magazine said, Despite a promising start, the nine tracks of Mirror to the Sky are just too tame. And with three songs pushing 10 minutes, and another clocking in at just under 14, this is a prog album that sets high expectations, but doesn't deliver. So to sum up then really, I mean let's be honest, Yes fans were incredibly upset when Bill Bruford left after Close to the Edge. Oh, they were very upset when Patrick Mraz replaced Rick Wakeman, or Heresy of Heresies when Trevor Horn replaced John Anderson. So are we being just a little bit too arsy about this? Or is this incarnation just uh, an ice bridge too far? And even when Drama came out, Drama is an album that's seen by many Yes fans as an understated classic, which prompted John Anderson to say that this album was not my idea of Yes and does not represent what the band truly is, which I guess is the question that we're all grappling with now. And it's a tricky one, isn't it? When you're talking about a band that's had more members than The very soul and identity is slightly harder to pin down. So as I said at the beginning, I'm kind of on the fence with this issue. In fact, I spent the whole summer sat in my garden, close to the hedge, listening to this band's back catalogue, trying to pin down what that true essence of yesness is. And have struggled as it's chopped and changed and moved direction over the years, which says that uh, this incarnation perhaps is as legitimate as any other. So the point that I made uh, at the beginning of this video about, you know, listen or don't listen and let's leave it at that seems rather apt here. But what can I say? You know, people care about this shit. And the comments below this video will bear testimony to that. However, I think it has to be said that owning the legal rights to a name doesn't mean it's right to use it. And I suppose you could end by saying that this band is more than just a logo, irrespective of how Mr. Dean might embellish it. And despite the fact I might have pissed a lot of you off, let's take some solace from the fact that we're all listening to this wonderful, wonderful music, perhaps just in a different order. And anyway, I'll leave you with my closing salvo, which is hope you're well, staying safe, and of course that you keep listening.